Ah, well, hello again, everybody. How y'all doing? I am just walking on my way home. Thought I'd do a bit of a recording. Bit of a chilly day today, right? Getting out, going home. Ah, what's on the mind today? Well, the Iowa caucus just happened. And as expected, uh, there is a fair amount of shenaniganry. Shenaniganry? Shenaniganry. Chicanery. I was trying to say both shenaniganry and chicanery, and it came out chicanery or whatever I said. Oh well. As expected, there's been quite a lot of manipulation uh, by the Democratic National Convention. Uh, lots of progressive outlets are reporting on the obvious nonsense that's been going on, the confusion, the chaos that's surrounding the Iowa caucus. Uh, and this is all uh, by design. That there, sure, there's a narrative that says, so Pete Buttigieg, butt guy, <laughs> Pete Buttigieg, and what is being reported in the mainstream media is that Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders are essentially tied with Pete Buttigieg slightly in the lead after 62% of uh, caucuses reporting. What this is being interpreted by, by progressives and by Bernie Sanders supporters um, is that they basically just stopped counting the moment they finished counting all of Pete uh, Buttigieg's supporters. Uh, and just the remaining 38% of ridings of uh, caucuses, rather, are Bernie Sanders heavy. And so they don't want to count those last ones. They don't want to report it. And instead, the story that they're going with is, oh, everything complicated and difficult because of this new app we've introduced. It shut down, it collapsed. It was a real problem. Now, the app is a manipulative story in and of itself that has the CIA's fingerprints all over it. The app is, uh-oh, I lost a glove. Did I lose a glove? No, I didn't lose a glove. Ha ha, glove. The, the app. So the Iowa caucuses, part of the reason why they're so beneficial to the American democratic system is because they're so, so open. People are in the room. Everyone knows who is supporting who. It is not easy, uh, if at all possible, to manipulate that system. And so the, uh, so the Iowa caucuses are actually a really great litmus test for any, anyone testing to see if they are viable as a presidential candidate. And the clear, so this app gets installed this year, it's installed. And the idea behind the app is that well, instead of phoning in the results, right, we will um, we'll have them funneled through this app, which is completely trustworthy, right? So you take a, an open system where everyone can see who's voting for who, and you funnel it through this app that is called Shadow. The name of the app is called Shadow. Well, when you dig any further into this, into this app and into these things, you begin to see that, uh, well, the Democratic National Convention donated money to the company Shadow Inc. That's their actual name, by the way. That's not a cartoon kind of character name. You can't write this. Shadow Inc. They donated money. But even worse than that, Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg, donated money to this company, Shadow Inc. And that's especially interesting because going into this caucus, Pete was polling at about third, fourth place. Ends up in first. Oh, go figure, eh? Go figure. So that seems like it's completely legitimate and not tilted against Bernie Sanders whatsoever. Because you gotta remember the goal for these people at this point, the Democrats, the democratic establishment, their goal 
is to get someone who is compliant to the corporate state who will go along and continue the plunder underneath that is occurring underneath corporate power will keep everybody working for capitalists will keep everyone adhered to a military dictatorship and control that the United States has fallen under and as long as they can so get someone to support them in those endeavors the wars in Libya the wars in Afghanistan the wars in Iraq the the, the ongoing conflicts all throughout the Middle East the attempted invasions into places like uh, Venezuela the attempted invasions into places like uh, Iran right these assassinations and coup attempts and all of this and if you're someone who's just gonna go along with that like Pete Buttigieg then maybe you're gonna get the nod Maybe you're going to get the support. So the goal of these people is to take someone like Pete Buttigieg and convince and manufacture that everyone has consented that he is the actual leader of the party. This manufacturing of consent that Noam Chomsky talks about in his book, Manufacturing Consent. How do you, how do you control a populace in a democratic society and get them to do get the populace to believe that what you are doing is their will. It's, it's falling apart for them, for the Democrats at the moment. Because Pete Buttigieg, first of all, th this is obvious, right? People are laughing over this, right? You, you turn on like Jimmy Dore, do a search on Jimmy Dore, listen to him talk about this, right? Joe Rogan is gonna talk about this, absolutely he's gonna talk about this. He's, everybody's gonna, Everyone is going to know, it's going to be open knowledge, that this election was rigged against Bernie Sanders. Uh, so far, right now, the numbers are about where the Sanders camp thinks that they should be. So let's step back and let's pretend for a minute that everything that's happening is actually on the level. That, oh sure, we installed this app and there actually was problems with the app. Let's pretend for a moment that this app story, this, this problems with the Iowa caucus, isn't some kind of larger scheme, right? Um, it's pretty obvious that the goal of the media at this point is to just circle the wagons uh, and instead of putting forward a po positive story about Bernie Sanders, tied for first place in Iowa, Bernie Sanders, Pete Buttigieg, instead of that story, the story they're going to run with is chaos at the Iowa convention. Oh, who knows what's going on in Iowa? Oh, who has any idea what's going there? We're certainly not going to run with Biden's complete collapse. Biden didn't even reach viability. He collapsed in Iowa. And if Joe Biden, who's run through Iowa, this is like his fourth time, fifth time running through Iowa as a presidential candidate, if he collapses in Iowa, that's the end of him. He's done. Uh, that should be the major headline story. It isn't. Uh, another he headline story, Sanders ties for first with Buttigieg. Uh, but they're not running with that story. Instead, the story they're running with is, oh, difficulties, complications. But if you listen to people from the Iowa ca caucus, there's always difficulties, there's always complications, right? So this is a stall tactic by the media. If, if... If one of their anointed, if Joe Biden suddenly got like the same percentage as Bernie Sanders, if he got 28% instead of the lousy 13 or 14 that he got, then they'd be running with, oh, well, Biden right in the lead. Oh, everything's going good. But instead of that, because we have this sort of mishmashy sort of situation, they need to stall. They need to, they can't declare anything for Sanders because they don't want to give him momentum. They can't declare anything because giving him momentum for going into New Hampshire, going into Super Tuesday, could be a death knell for them. So instead of announcing any results or anything like this, oh, well, there's just chaos in Iowa, moving on to the next thing. They can't declare him a, a loser. They can't declare him a winner. So they just, oh, it's all a wash. And they move on. And that's exactly what they're going to do. And they're never going to mention Iowa again. Uh, even though he wins Iowa. 
ties for first place with Pete, Bud with Pete Buttigieg, which means they split delegates. So Buttigieg gets something like 10, so does Sanders. He also gets 10. Now why this is big news is that Pete Buttigieg's strategy was just to camp in Iowa and talk to Iowans, right? He doesn't have any organization past this. He doesn't have organization in New Hampshire. He doesn't have organizations in Nevada. He doesn't have organization in uh, any of these places. And so the question still comes forward, how is it going to be that the Democrats are going to run? Are they going to run with Pete Buttigieg? He looks like he's gonna be compliant. He looks like he's gonna go along with the corporate state. Looks like all that stuff is just, he's just like a corporate shill all the way down. So how are they going to convincingly steal this election away from Bernie Sanders? And I don't think they can. Not convincingly, anyway. Like, they've got this app, which is already, like, are you kidding me? You're putting your, your electoral results that are clear and open and, and, and transparent for everyone to see through an app you've called Shadow. Like, uh, grab two cans. Huh, sorry, we're going back here. Uh, like, uh, uh, called Shadow. Like, it's just like a, it's such an obvious ploy. Uh, is that place even open? My, uh, uh, my partner just texted me and said I should go get some tomatoes. So I'm going to get some tomatoes and continue talking about this. If this place is still open. Um, so, oh, you know, that place is closed. No, nah, it's too late. I'm going home. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for putting up with that. Okay, so the, so the Pete Buttigieg, he doesn't have the momentum, and he never will. He doesn't have a ground game. He doesn't have the supporters. He doesn't have the base. His polling numbers outside of Iowa are non-existent. And so f from here, it really does have to be complete false data. They need to forge all the data from here on out to, to continue with this narrative that, well, Pete Buttigieg, he's actually the legitimate candidate. Uh, and their narrative is in place, right? Like, oh, he's such a statement. He's so well-educated. He's, he's, he's exactly what you want in a president. He's got all the attributes. He would be the youngest president ever, right? What a Cinderella story. What an ambitious tale of blah, 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 of individual effort and, and see what you're, what you can do if you just believe. Meanwhile, he's like a CIA asset. His role in this is to act as a Guaido figure, as somebody to just declare himself the leader of the country when he didn't win anything. Uh, and as we move forward into New Hampshire, as we move forward into Super Tuesday, the, the Democrats' larger plan is become, gonna become more and more obvious. And they've got large plans. Like, they're, they're trying to eliminate the Iowa caucus now. And they're going to use this uh, uh, app failure and then all the confusion this caused. They're going to use this as an excuse to shut down the Iowa caucus. Which is just another way to eliminate uh, a, a part of your elector electorate from the process of selection. To steadily whittle away any popular uh, uh, consent, whittle away any popular uprising, any popular movement that can happen, and funnel it directly into the superdelegates, which is ultimately where this is gonna go. Like, unless Sanders, because right now the, the DNC's plan, they know they can't run with Buttigieg, right? They know they can't just run with Buttigieg. He doesn't have the popular support, and he never will. Uh, Biden's collapsed, uh, 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 Warren is collapsing, uh, so, and all that's left is like Bloomberg, who's basically funding his own election, and he's got no support anywhere. Um, so at this point, the strategy from the DNC just needs to be to dilute the waters enough, right? 
that every single delegate taken away from Sanders and put into the pocket of any other candidate is a win, right? And so it's literally the entire Democratic National Convention uh, against the entire DNC against Sanders. You got Biden, you got Buttigieg, you got uh, uh, Warren, Bloomberg. It's all of them against Sanders. And that's the narrative. And I don't think that that's going to necessarily hold. Uh, I, I think that some of the delegates who support Warren will be interested in Sanders. I think that they share common interests in that regard. Um, and it's, I do think that what it does come down to though, if they can't, if Sanders can't get the delegates to simply win the election, if it goes into some kind of second round of voting or something like that, where the superdelegates become involved, the superdelegates are just going to stop them. Uh, because they would rather vote for a fascist, which is Trump, uh, than vote for a socialist. Which uh, tells you everything you need to know about liberals, basically. Because that's, uh, that's the center for you. You know? Rather vote for fascists than socialists, so... Rather vote for people who put boots on people's heads, crush them into the earth, than vote for people who are trying to lift people up. Tells you a little bit about the world you live in. Uh, yeah, and this ties in, like this is a global phenomenon. This is what's going on across the globe. The neo in Germany, here's, here's a great example of what I'm talking about. In Germany, the neoliberals have forged an alliance with the neo-fascist party uh, in order to seize power in uh, uh, one of the ridings in Germany. Uh, and a fun fact, it was, it's the uh, same riding where the Nazis began in Germany. So you heard it here first, kids. The neoliberals are going to ally with the fascists because neoliberalism is fascism, just with better PR. Anyway, that's the end of me. Hope you guys are having a good time. Love you all. Have fun out there.